I live here. Eighth Man DVD. Cartoon Classics. Where did he go, George? Which way did he go? Mm, that way. Well, gee, thanks a lot, George. Thanks a lot. What's the matter, Bunny Rabbit? Speak to me. Why don't you say something? I'm only three and a half years old. <laughs> Him. He's silly. 
We ran out of gas. Yeah, you know how it is with these A-cards. Interpretation of a familiar fairy tale entitled The Big Bad Wolf and a Tree Little Pigs. Set to the delightful music of Johannes Brahms' Hungarian dances. As the scene opens, we find the Tree Little Pigs building their respective houses.
Wayne's music was. <laughs> First, we will hear a waltz written by Johann Strauss. <laughs> and as we hear the rhythmic strains of the haunting we Wayne, listen to the whipwing rhythm of the woodwinds as it rolls a wound and a wound, and it comes out here. <laughs> Wasn't that lovely? And now we will present the beautiful Blue Danube. <laughs> Quick, quick, quick. 
$152.50. You will, of course, uh, pay the bill now before you leave, no? Uh, no, no, no. I mean, yes. Um, uh, my partner, Daffy Duck, will be re right back. He's out uh, he, uh, he, uh, cashing a check. Come on, seven. Be good to Daffy. Don't fail me now. Uh-oh. Snake eyes. Too bad. You is a dead duck, duck. Uh, don't worry, uh, Daffy will be here in a minute with a uh, 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 money. Well, um, I hope so. Huh? Insulting my integrity! Hey, Fatso! Insinuating I'd flee this flea-bitten dump! Hey, Fatso! Intimating I'd abscound with your financial remuneration! Hey, Fatso! Hey, look! A Dick Tracy character! Prune face! You have insulted me. We meet on the field of honor. My card. You've had your coffee racing for this week, Robespierre. You have insulted me. We meet on the field of onion. Okay, we'll pay, we'll pay! 
How much was it? How much? <laughs> Pimento University. Pimento U. Good old P U. Pimento U, oh sweet P U. Thy fragrant odor scents the air. A pox on Yale, poo poo Purdue. Pimento U, my college fair. Oh, Out tea. and away, the most popular fellows at, uh... <coughs> Out and away, the most popular fellows at old P.U. are the three Dover boys. Tom, the fun-loving member of the trio. Dick, a serious lad of 18 summers, plus a winter in Florida, as related to the Dover boys in the Everglades. And uh, Larry, the youngest of the three jerks, uh, uh, brothers. A gay outing at the park has been planned by the merry trio, and they are off to fetch their fiancée, dainty Dora Standpipe, at Miss Cheddar's Female Academy close by. With their usual punctuality, 
The boys arrive at the pointed hour of three. on their rollicking way. Forced to pass a certain public house, a tavern of unsavory repute, our young friends meet the distressing situation with their usual uncompromising moral fortitude. Little do they know that even now, within this very tavern, Dan Backslide, the former sneak of Roquefort Hall, coward, bully, cad, and thief, and arch enemy of the Dover Boys, squanders his misspent life. Hark! The Dover Boys. Dread them. Double dread them. They are escorting Dora Standpipe. Dear rich Dora Standpipe, how I love her! Father's money. Confound those Dover boys! Oh, how I hate them! I hate Tom! I hate Dick! And I hate Larry! They drive me to drink! Confound them. Let us draw the curtain on this sordid scene and turn to more pleasant surroundings, where we find our young friends engaged in a spirited game of hide, go, and uh, seek. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. No, no! In here! No, up here, up here! No, no, over here, over here! Over here. In here. No, no, in here. Now in here. Over 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 A runabout. I'll steal it! No one will ever know! save her from this predicament? Will no one come to her assistance? But hold on. What's this? It looks like an alert young scout. 
And that's just what it is. He'll not fail her, I'll venture. Telegram for the Dover boys. Mrs. Tom, Dick, and Larry care away with having upper bottleneck New York. Sirs, quote. Help! Unquote. Signed Dora. 35 cents collect. Chin held high, the stalwart sons of OPU are here at hand to do or die. P.U. P.U. we're all for you. Yay, boom. Unhand her, Dan Backslide. Unhand her, Dan Backslide. Unhand her, Dan Backslide. Hey, we're getting in a rut. Stand up and fight, you coward, bully, cat, and thief. Oh, you haven't been thrashed enough yet, eh? And now it is time to say goodbye. Goodbye. Freddy Cat, this is only a tiny little bird. You mean a poor little dinsy wincy itsy bitsy defenseless boy? Yes. Let me at him! Let me at him! I'll get him, baby! Guys, we all moonlight him! Let me at him! Take it easy, take I'll it easy. I'll show him! Where's he get that stuff? Don't hold me back! I'll get him! I'll show him! Come on, quit your fooling. Don't get up that ladder. Push me, Abbott! Don't push come on, me! Come on. I'm scared to go up high. I get hydrophobia. No, oh, I don't want to come on. Oh, don't come push on. me. Oh, come don't. On. You can't make me do it. You can't make me do it. <laughs> he do it. Come on, stupid. Get the bird. Oh. Give me the bird. Give me the bird. If the Hayes office would only let me, I'd give him the point, all right. <laughs> under control. Don't push me down in a box, Babbitt. Please don't do it. Don't do it. Hey, Babbitt. Oh, Babbitt. Babbitt. What's the matter now? I'm afraid of the dark. Well, I'll let you out then. I thought I tore a putty cat. I did. I tore a putty cat. Cheap 
Baba, I'm just no good. Oh, the brakes were against you. I'm a flopperoo. I can't even get the boy. Don't worry. You'll get it, all right. You mean I'll get it in the end? Yeah, and you'll get a big bang out of it, too. Well, that sure takes a load off of my mind. Clowning. What's the matter with you? Aren't you ashamed? I don't know. Why do you do these things? I'm a bad pussycat. Oh, I just can't seem to get the boy. Keep no use. Don't worry. I can't do it. This'll get you up there. Contact. 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 Ah. Uh -huh. 
What a place, what a place. Why, it's as pretty as a picture. But if I ever told my favorite wife the awful truth, I'd land right on the front page. Yes, sir, read Bobby. Cigars, cigarettes, pots. Oh, hello, Gailey. I sure I'll buy some of your cigarettes. You got a light, kid? Hello, Anne. How's the oomph girl tonight? Oomph, 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 oomph. Good evening, Mr. Wise Mola. Listen, you mugs, this job is plenty risky, get me? You gotta be tough guys to go through with it. Because if you get caught, you take the rap alone, see? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll let you try it. Listen, you mugs, one tie, all tie. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're all enjoying this little hoedown. Comes now a bit of the... Get away from me, boys, you bother me. Uh, comes now a bit of the dance. And if you'll all gather around, Brother Stokotsky will give out with the helping of that South American jive. Laconga, to be exact, so make it mellow, fella. Jimmy, that rhythm does something to me. Let's dance, will you, please? All uh, uh, sir, it's not that I don't want to. You understand? It's, uh, it's on account of that. Oh, uh, gee whiz, I don't know any of these modern steps here. Oh, come on, Jimmy, please. For me? Oh, sir, I, uh, uh, oh, heck, I guess I might as well try it. I'm gonna lose my to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with you. Don't go away, folks. This ought to be good. Comes now the feature attraction of the evening. Uh, keep moving, boys. I'll see you at the track. Comes now the feature attraction of the evening, Miss Sally Strand and her bubble dance. Now, if you boys will put away your bean shooters, we'll get on with the show. I have a 
haven't seen such a beautiful bubble since I was a child. A few words, see? I've been chasing you all night. Now, how about a little kiss, baby? Well, fancy meeting you here.
yours, I betcha. <laughs> I thought so. Put your hands up. You criminals are all alike. I can see it in your eyes. Just a stupid ignoramus. A numbskull. A nitwit. A nincom... a poor little sick billy goat. Hey, William, this'll fix you up. A sodium acetyl salicylate. Listen to it fizz. Provides immediate relief from hypergasicity, banishes after-dinner discomfort and loginess. Say, this tin termite is a Nazi. A folk wolf in sheep's clothing. Uncle Dillingham duck. Did I cry spinach when I stood a duck on Plymouth Rock? Did I in Washington give up with a Lefogian hog? Did Dan O'Gull and me quite quits when engines shaved our scalp? Did John Paul Duck give up the ship or ever holler help? Hey, Daffy, Americans don't give up. No, Daffy, Americans right? And I'm an American! Duck. Up there in the sky! It's a bird! No, it's a plane! No! It's Super American! John McRoger, Airman First Class. That blissful smile on John's face is because John has reached the end of his first hitch, and John is getting out. He is now contemplating the advantages that all civilians take for granted, like a solid gold jagalack, a penthouse overlooking the river, a good job, and a beautiful wife. And to pinch to send home to me wife, poor wife, no cares have I to grieve me, no pretty little coil to deceive me. Uh oh, happy here it comes, a message. Me. As we go rolling, hi Mac, rolling home. Name is Grogan, technical gremlin, voice class. Yeah, yeah, I know, and you're here to show me why I should re-enlist. 
about all the multitudinous advantages accruing to the re-enlistee. Look, Buster, I don't know what all the trick sarcasm is about, but I'm getting out of this man's Air Force. Capital O, capital U, capital T. Out! Hey, you getting out too? Wait, that's different. Let's pick up our discharge papers together, uh, buddy. Are you kidding? Why, the minute they start talking to you, you'll go all soft and sign up again. But I... Shut up. Sit down. Honest, I've been dreaming about getting out ever since I got in. All these guys are the same. Pushovers. Wild blue yonder pushovers. I don't know why I'm so soft-headed, but I guess I gotta brief this character so he won't be a patsy and get talked back in. <laughs> These G.I. magic wands always fouled up. Later, later. Now then, the first thing they're gonna try to do they're gonna try to tell you how much better off you'll be staying in the Air Force. Okay, just for the record, let's take a look. That's you, and that's your re-enlistment paycheck. Airman voice class, four years service, 137 bucks and 59 cents a month. And this is what the average veteran of your age is earning in civilian life. 253 bucks and 47 cents. That's $115.88 more than you make, Mac. Why, that's an outrage. That's, that's... Of course, to be perfectly fair, the civilian does have to make uh, certain minor deductions from his paycheck that you don't. Uh, like food, lodging, clothes, higher income taxes, medical and dental bills, and life insurance. Uh, minor deductions like that there. Well, uh, it's only 197 bucks a month. Only. Another thing I uh, forgot to mention was that an airman can increase the size of his check by uh, seniority, advancement in rank, allowances, overseas duty, and flying duty, and as much as six times your monthly base pay for your first re-enlistment. But the civilian still makes more money! Sure, sure, and anyway, the money isn't the important thing, is it, Grogan? It's the job that counts. Brother, you are so right there. Today we find John McRoger, apprentice trial fastwinder, happily at work. Hey, Mac, there you are. Hey, uh, there you are again. Okay, so you're a little lonely. That's natural. Uh, too bad they don't have service clubs for civilians. But wow, look at them fancy duds. Nothing like pride in your appearance. I, uh, I don't know, Grogan. It just doesn't seem quite what I want to do. Look, pal, you can't back out now. Why, why now, uh, you take a retirement. Do you realize that as a civilian, you can look forward to retiring at the age of 65 with a cool 85 bucks coming in from Social Security every month? Yeah? Well, in the Air Force, I can retire when I'm 38 and draw down 137 bucks a month for the rest of my life. What are you, a has-been or something? Where do they get off retiring you at 38? It's an imposition. Some imposition? Okay, I decide I don't want to be imposed on. I decide I'm going to stay in another 10 years, till I'm 48. Then they really impose on you. $229 a month. And, and Grogan, I've already got four years start. Well, uh, you can retire on that kind of dough as a civilian, too. Oh, absolutely. All I gotta do is I gotta save up about 90,000 bucks and put it out at 3% interest. A cinch. 
All right, yeah, I know, I know. You save 60 bucks a week for 30 years. Okay, okay, so it's ridiculous. I'll admit there's a few good things about the Air Force. Like 30-day paid vacations. And medical expenses and a 10000 buck insurance policy thrown in. And family allowances. And housing. And free education. <laughs> You know something else, Mac? Us guys in the Air Force know more than anybody else in the whole world how to keep these beautiful crates flying. Okay, okay, I've been briefed enough. Let's get going. Yeah, I guess we both know what you want to do now. Right? Right. Look, Buster, if you think you can get by in the Air Force without me, you got yourself another thing coming. Sam. Take a look at today's timetable. Only one of these trains can get through to Washington. 44 is a single track, you know. Yeah, but Sam, aren't the American people on board the Win the War special? Well, all but a few wreckers. You see that switch, Joe? You've got to sidetrack the defeatist limited. I'm just the guy that can do it, Sam. Look, Joe, you can, if you don't fall asleep at the switch like you did in November of 1942. Asleep! Don't worry about me. They'll have to knock me out first. <laughs>
What happened? What? Who are you? Not at all, not at all. Glad you dropped in, my boy. Glad you dropped in. But you're looking a bit peaked, Joe. SA driver Sam's been overworking you. No run down, high production pressure. Relax now. Relax. Oh. Relax. Have a cigar. Oh. Let's talk this over, my boy. According to the papers, you're on the wrong track. It says here that the Win the War special isn't going through. All the workers are on strike. That's a lie. We're out to win the war. War, war! I tell you, this is rules about war! Buddy, after all, Joe, business is entitled to a fair profit during this war. But wages have to be frozen, Joe. The workers are making too much money for their own good. And prices haven't risen very much, have they, Joe?
get out and vote. To get the thing we're fighting for, fighting for, fighting for. To get the thing we're fighting for, we gotta get out and vote. the Berlin and the Rome front. The fellow with the bullet is depending on the fellow with the ballot on the home front. Oh, well, we want to have a better world, better world, better world. Want to have a better world, we got to get out and vote. Thank you. 